Our guest today is a wonderful musician who has accomplished what many wish to accomplish, which is quitting your day job and getting out on your own and following your passion and actually making a living off it and supporting yourself off it. George Stass, everyone. Woo-hoo, <laughs> hello. Oh, George. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's nice it's to be here. It's a pleasure. So what did you have for breakfast today, George? Well. It's the most important meal of the day. <laughs> You know, I, I want to tell you, oh, I had scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs, nothing really to, but we made it nice. Some onions, some tomatoes, and uh, some cheese. <laughs> so you <laughs> gave up the stuff. corporate life to pursue a life of total boredom at home? Yes, oh, total okay, boredom, so complete nice. and total boredom, as opposed to boredom on the job. <laughs> you sell out. I can't believe it. <laughs> so you have a record coming out. Yes. All right, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, it's... Um, it's untitled as of right now. Oh, well, the, the working title I have is Unfinished Business, but I'm not sure if that's ultimately what it's going to be called. And, uh, and I think it'll be out in September, hopefully. Um, but I'm very excited because we just released the first uh, single. It's, uh, it's called We Are the Universe, and we did a video for it as well. And uh, the release was just uh, two days ago on my birthday, uh, July 6th. Birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. How's that feel? <laughs> uh, it's it's good. It feels great. It feels good because of this project, especially. It's nice to have a birthday and also have created, given birth to mm-hmm. uh, this project. You know, um, it's it's just nice. I, and then the timing worked out nice. You know, as far as you know, when when we released, it was originally going to be released a little earlier, and uh, you know, things got delayed as they often do happen. But uh, mm-hmm. but then the birthday thing kind of it all just worked out very nicely. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the the album. Um, we're st- I've I've started. It's it's gonna probably be uh, maybe about 14 tracks altogether, and I would say about maybe m- like a hip hop album. A little more, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, maybe a little more than half have been recorded already. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And speaking of hip hop, what kind of music do you uh, do? Do I like? Do I How listen to? How would you to? describe it? No, that you're playing. Oh, that I'm creating. that I'm creating. Um, well, you know, it's funny. So We Are The Universe is, I would say, it's, it was the first track and it's, uh, it's very unusual. It's very probably different from everything else that will be on the album. Um, I don't even know how to really classify it. I mean, things like world music or new age, yet that doesn't really, it's not really those things. But uh, because I guess it's because of the content of it and the way that we created it, it's, um, I don't know. It's just, it sort of, you know, it's, it's, um, it was inspired actually by... <laughs> Um, it was inspired by, I was watching this, um, this video, uh, uh, Deepak Chopra was doing this, uh, video called, uh, what George Harrison knew. And, uh, I was drawn to that naturally, George Harrison, but I had also been listening to a little bit of Deepak. I like his voice. It's very, very soothing. Deepak <laughs> I found Chopra? It, yeah, Deepak Chopra. Even if you don't yeah. care about what he's talking about. No, I think that's the most important part. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Great, not the message. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, I got into sort of listening. I would listen to him actually on my way home from my gigs at night because it would just sort of wind me down. You know, as a, I used to listen to music too, but I would be amped up and I need to kind of come down so I can go to sleep. I got in the habit of listening to Deepak. But anyway, um, I, I, this video, I found it very inspiring. And it's funny, I, I, it was like a 20 minute video or something like that. Uh, and when the video was over, I, these words just started coming to me and I just wrote it all down, you know. And then coincidentally, I've been learning, I'm always learning, you know, I play music full time, so I'm always learning a lot of cover stuff. And my guitar happened to be in an open tuning uh, that Jimmy Page used for the Rain song. I was learning that song, and so I had it sitting that, there for a while. And, and previous to watching the video, I was thinking, oh, man, I'd love to be cool if I could write something in this, in this tuning, because it's an unusual tuning. It's a G suspended something mm-hmm. tuning like that. And uh, anyway, so I had the words, and I picked up the guitar, and it all just kind of sort of started coming together. And that's where the song started. And... Um, and then, you know, it was the first song that I brought into the studio. But even when I wrote it, I remember thinking at the time, like, hmm, this is a little unusual. It's not typical mm-hmm. of what I would, it's not what I would typically do. I'm influenced by, I mean, I love the blues, folk, country, you name it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open. My palate's pretty wide. I listen to a lot of different things. Um, I, I, I like singer-songwriter because I feel singer-songwriters write songs. And the songs come out to be whatever they come out to be. You know, it could be mm. R and B, rockabilly, whatever. You know, that for me, I, I I find, and the guys that I like, especially, they tend to sort of explore all those genres, and I find that interesting as opposed to just one type of music. I can't sure. see myself yeah. sort of being locked into just doing one type of thing all the time. Okay. So no, be no fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, 
yeah, it's interesting and it's fun, you know. I wouldn't really, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't like to say like so much new, when I think of new age, I think of like Enya. Yeah, I know. That that's was, what I meant. I knew when I said it, it doesn't. Like, but I mean, like I could see where, I mean, just a world, world music, tribal music. Yeah, that's probably more what it is. The, um, you have like a whole percussion like yeah. uh, going on. Like, that's like a real heavy part of it. Like, and it's just very, I mean, like, like it just brings upon like images of like the Sahara, like, and just tigers, like chasing the like, gazelles. Like it's very... It's very just earthly. Yeah, um, and I agree. Very tribal, very like sort of primitive, going back to like Indians and all yeah. of that stuff. It's true. So it's a it's very spiritual song. Um, how would you? What? Well, I mean, it's very accessible for, I think, like all religions. Like too, I think anyone can kind of get behind it. Yeah. This is what feels really good about the message. Like what? Um, the Amish are never gonna hear it. <laughs> Not the Amish, of course, but yeah, you're right. That Poor market, Ezekiel, man. There's a market there, and actually, I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'm gonna uh, write something for the Amish. <laughs> let's just take a moment for shy. We'll see you live. <laughs> you can go there. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's something to think about, actually. <laughs> what kind of what was it? Deepak that kind of like brought you towards that, um, or was it just more something something else that kind of? You know, Deepak's probably the, just the latest for me. I've always been sort of before him was like Marion Williamson. I've always I'm a, I mean I was raised I Catholic. That. I love her. I think she's great too. She's scary. Scary too. It terrifies me, but I love her at the same time. But I think she's. But I, I mean, I love the things she's talking about. I do. I love all that stuff. I was raised Catholic, so I, you know, I started there, and then I went to the whole usual thing that happens where you start questioning all of it, and you get rid of it, and then you go through. You know, if you're raised Catholic, there's so much fear of God put into you, and oh my God, what am I doing? I'm not even supposed to question. I'm probably going to hell, and everyone I love is going to die because yeah. that's you know Old Testament type of stuff, and that's the kind of stuff. That's, you know, kind of put into you from all of that. But, um, you know, as I progressed throughout the years, I was just always open. And I started realizing, like, okay, you know, yeah, I, I believe in, I'm spiritual for sure. I believe that there's something, you know, out there bigger yeah. than us. And, uh, you know, and so, yeah, I've always kind of been open. Uh, and, I'm, you know, I'm still open to exploring different things. But so, yeah, I, you know, Marion Williamson, Deepak Chopra is just the latest. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and like I said, it was kind of just, I, I wasn't really, I mean, this is what I love about inspiration. I have found that when I'm open to it, it, you know, it comes, it just comes and then you have to run, you know, get, get to the paper, get to the guitar, you know, and, and tape it down and just put it down. Even if it's, I try not to question it too much, just, just do it. And then like this type of song, I didn't really know for sure if I would do anything with it, but I just, I had it down. And, I, and then when I listened back to it more and more, I was like, I, I actually kind of like this. And, uh, and I was like, well, why not? Let's just, let, you know, let's see what I, what I can do with it, where it yeah. goes, you know. Nice. Now you said it's not typical of all the stuff that you do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, I think just in terms of the, the music, like, like John was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's got a big, uh, you know, it's, it's got tribal, you know, drums and um, it's just, it's just a little bit different. The other songs on there are going to be more, um, I would say like uh, some of it's going to be more folky country, uh, blues probably pop uh, some of it's a little bit more straight rock you know um, so I just think this track in itself is just kind of probably different from everything and yet at the same time it's also me I mean this guitar it's funny I go back and forth because then I listen to it and I'm, I'm like well it is me too it's also my sound you can still hear there's acoustic guitar in it and, and things like that and I feel like there's a folk and a country sort of yeah, uh, you know in that as well okay where'd you record it? Oh, I recorded it at High Shelf Studios no in shit, Long I've Island City them. yeah <laughs> how was that? It was great. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> great, really. Um, well, there's a lot of nice things about it. Um, I grew up in Long Island City, first of all, so it was kind of cool to uh, actually, I would never have ever imagined that uh, I'd find myself uh, making music here because uh, when I was growing up, there wasn't a whole lot here at the time. But there's something full circle about it all for me, you know, coming back to do this and record here and, uh, and meeting uh, James Chan, who's uh, a producer and engineer of... of uh, at High Shelf, he's really uh, great to work with. I loved working with him. Very, very talented, super talented, uh, creative guy. Um, and I found, you know, we had a nice rapport, he and I, you know, especially with recording We Are the Universe. So we got really into it. James is great because he's, he really knows his stuff, you know. And I was really impressed by his, mm. like, you know, he just knows a lot of different aspects of it all. So it's not just the recording, but, like, he's also a musician. I saw him soldering things together, and he's into getting sounds. Yeah, I came in one time, and I saw that you had a long tube yeah. that you were singing through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. that was, yeah. it was awesome to do that. And he was so into it, and I was like, oh, this is, this is fantastic. Uh. I mean, we had a lot of fun. I, I loved mm. it. It was, like, really, it was just so much fun. It was like being in a playground. It nice. was just really fun creating that way. Now, you say you lived in Long Island City. 
you've talked before you, you grew up in the projects yeah how did you go from the projects to being a folk singer <laughs> does it i've seen the well, movies they, they don't not mold it not, into folk singers not typically well it's actually funny so yeah i grew up in ravenswood projects which is not too far from where we are right now you have queensbridge projects and then like you know another five minutes away is is ravenswood projects um i grew up there but you know um I, you know, I, I started listening. I started playing music when I was like 13, 14. So that's around the time that actually John Lennon was killed. Mm. That was 1980. Um, and so right around that same time, I started playing guitar and, um, you know, falling in love with music and discovering the Beatles because, of course, his death brought all of that music back in a way that probably, you know, for that time, you know, I might not have been as influenced by if that hadn't happened because that was really in the forefront and it caught me. And by getting into the Beatles and John Lennon, at least the way that I did it, you really got into everything else. Because, you, you know, for me, I was like, oh, they listen to Buddy Holly and Elvis and Carl Perkins. And so I found myself listening to everything that they sort of were into. And not just mm-hmm. the Beatles, but everything else, too, in the 60s. And, and that opens you up to everything, you know what I mean? Motown and country and bluegrass and folk. So, you know, little by little, and then you're, next thing you know, you're listening to Bob Dylan and you're listening to Woody Guthrie because Bob Dylan was into Woody Guthrie. So all of that, for me... I was taking all of that in, you know. I also used to sing in a folk group, too, at the same time, around 15, 16. So the funny thing about that, about the country thing, is that I remember, I always remember this, you know, once I started writing, like, some of my first songs, you know, you write your songs, and you're thinking in your head, yeah, man, this is, like, rock, and it's the Beatles, whatever, you know. You'd play it for people, and I, and I would get this consistent. People were like, oh, it's, it's cool. It sounds kind of country. It sounds kind of folk, you know. And I'm thinking, country, folk, that's not what I'm after here. I'm rock and roll, man. But then I realized a little bit later on, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that does make sense. Because, again, if you listen to, like, especially the Beatles, their earlier stuff, um, and the things that they were influenced by, like I said, you go back to all of that stuff. I mean, that's all rock and roll comes from all of that stuff, mm. you know? And I was taking all of that in, you know, and Bob Dylan and, and all of that, you know? Now, in New York, there's no country music station in New York City now. Was there one back then or anything like that? You know, well, here's the other thing, and I do think this was a big, big part of it. I grew up in a time, and I love this, I think AM radio was great because on AM radio, it's not like today. If you think about it, it's almost backwards. Today, things are more segregated than they were when we were growing up or when I was growing up, I feel like, in the 70s. I feel like, on, you know, on the 70s, you heard everything right. on the same mm-hmm. radio station, and I was exposed to all of it. So I'm hearing Elton John, I'm hearing Roberta Flack, you're hearing the OJs, you're hearing wow. Kenny Rogers, you're hearing all on one station. And I was taking all of that in. I remember we had the radio on, and I'm listening to all these tunes, and, and the Beatles, even before I knew who they were, you know. Mm-hmm. Once again, I was like, oh, once, you know, the Beatles, I was like, oh, I know those songs. I heard those songs when I was a kid. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, my, so, my stepdad told me that, like, back in the 70s, he, he went to a concert, and for five bucks, the headliner was Kiss. <laughs> ZZ Top opened, yeah. and then Earth, Wind, and Fire opened for Isn't them. That amazing? Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you would never, because <laughs> also they were figuring time. it out. You know, you got to remember too, I think back then, you know, it's not like now, it's all, you know, we're, it's marketing and all this stuff and mm. packaging and, and, you know, every you got all these corporations behind it. But back then it was still pretty new. Yeah. And so mm. they were just all figuring it out, yeah. you know, put these guys together. Okay, yeah, you know, whatever. Mm. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But I do think that was key and that, it was great. I'm, mm. I'm very glad that I had that you know that radio was that way because I did get to hear all of these things and I love them still and even in you know I play full time for a living so I and a lot of it is covers um I love one of the things I love to do and it influences what I do too like I was saying before about the rain song I just happen to be learning that song because I'm always learning songs there's so much it's like I'll never you know hear it all and learn it all but I love that it's there for me because I get so much from I just love discovering these things, you know. And then a lot, often I, I, you know, when I, it's a song I want to learn, I, I'm always curious, like, what influenced them? You know, nowadays you can go on, go on Wikipedia and find out all that information. Who are they writing about? What influenced them? And that leads you always to something else, yeah. you know. Um, and I love doing that and discovering that. And it definitely influences what I'm doing, you know, taking all of that in. Okay, well, let's talk about that. What, uh, what precipitated you to becoming, getting rid of your job and, Doing music full time. Um, Weren't you doing the right thing, bro? Wasn't, wasn't the plan working out? <laughs> Did you well, have like any sort of like "fuck you guys, I'm out of here"? Or was it just a quiet sort of? I uh, well, I kind of had a little bit of both in a way. I um, what were you doing? I was the well, the last job I had, bef- you know, before I did this full time, I was working at believe it or not at a law firm. Uh, which was just something I fell into. It wasn't like, but I'd been there three and a half years. I was sort of in an office uh, position there. Um, and I was there. I, I, 
it was different for me because I never had a job like that before. Everything I did mm. before that was sort of like, you know, was messenger type work or, you know, working. Uh, I worked at Tower Records, you know, I was a sales clerk and things like that. Oh, cool. This job was cool because it was like, you know, respectability, mm. it was good money, benefits and all that. And I had a girlfriend at the time who I was living with, so I was really on my way to sort of being, you know. You were bona fide. Mm. I was bona fide, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she was right behind it. And, and it, it felt good for, for about a year and a half. And actually... Um, there was a brief moment there where I actually decided, thought I, I was actually going to give the music. It was the only time I've ever done it in my life, and I, I think maybe it lasted for two weeks. Uh, I had a little band, uh, and we were doing pretty good, and we didn't have a permanent drummer, but it was my, myself, another guitar player, and a bass player. And we were starting to make a little progress. You know, back then you had the music papers. We got a little write-up about our little Roots cassette <laughs> that we made. Uh, it was three, like, original songs, and that was going really well. And then it just, we just... You know, and it imploded and uh, it fell away, and and I was devastated by it, and I was so much so that I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. I've, I've put too much time and money into this, and I just felt like, and I had my girlfriend. I was like, fuck this. And I say fuck. And I said yeah, it. Going out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and I, so I just thought, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't, I didn't want to do it, but I I couldn't stay away from it. I mean, I guess maybe it was two two and a half uh, weeks at the most, and then I ended up <laughs> finding myself picking it up again and going to play open mics and things like that. Um, and so uh, I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to pursue it. She didn't really want me to pursue it. Um, she wanted me to, you know, she wanted to get married and have babies and uh, that kind of thing. And uh, George, dun, dun, when are you going to grow up, George? These pipe jeans of yours, you can't do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Um, I need a real man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, so I, I was at the law firm. I think what really happened is um, in the back of my mind the whole time, um, I, 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 I was just, might be a little fuzzy on this. I think she and I ended, the relationship ended, and uh, I was at, you know, I was still at the law firm. I started, I was gigging at night. I used to gig at night, and it was becoming harder and harder to do both. It's hard to get up and be at a job at 8.30 in the morning and then go play gigs at night, but I was doing it. And in the back of my mind, I think it was, there was always, I was wondering if I could play music full time. I just always wanted to see if I could do it. And, uh, fate if you want to call it that things happened at the job where it got to a point where there, there was an issue there uh with uh, my my supervisor and uh you know basically things were coming to a head and i was going to have to make a decision about whether or not i want to stay there anymore uh oh, this is the hero's journey bro yeah no this really is <laughs> well i have to say this truly was a turning point for me in my life it's one of those moments and i feel i don't know if they don't happen often but it I mean, where I was aware that it was. I was very well aware that this is one of those moments and, like, you have to really figure, you know, make a decision here. Mm -hmm. But it was beautiful because it was one of those things, too, where I opened my eyes and said, wait a minute, you have all these gigs that you play at night. You probably actually could do this now for a living. You know, if you want to, you can you can give it a shot. And that was actually kind of cool. It, so it forced me to sort you of... Need a little shove. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, that's what it was. I basically, I gave my two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more that happened regarding that, which was very... Um, um, you know, I, I was I was very proud that I was able to um, I was able to sort of give my two weeks notice and sort of let this guy know what I thought about him and things like that. For me, there was no fear there because this was not a career I wanted to pursue, uh -huh. and uh, so it was very it's it's you know it was a good feeling to uh, be was able to he, sort of uh, very ethically deprived. <laughs> like. He was a very it's one of those things, and it's funny again. It's, this is one of those things that it's, it's like you know you see the stuff in the movies, and you realize oh yeah, the movies is because it's real life. That stuff always comes from real stuff. Yeah. yeah. But you, when you're actually seeing it, sometimes you think wow, this is like such a cliche that you can't believe it. But and then you re realize oh yeah, dream. it's because it actually came from this first. Right. So, um, this was just yeah, it was just a typical setup of of a guy who had power, wasn't liked by a lot of people, um, but you know the powers that are above him keep him in his position because it works for them. Absolutely. Mm. But all the people that are around him are kind of suffering and dealing with him and I was one of them when it, yeah. when it became a problem. But fortunately for me, I was in a position to see that and be like, well, I don't have to play this game anymore and actually, I can even do one more. I can actually tell you what I think and <laughs> what a lot of people think here. And it's just funny because this was a law firm and once I yeah. started saying the things that I was saying, and, you know, people talk as you do, there's always gossip. Mm -hmm. People knew and I had people coming in saying, thanks, George, thanks for saying that. Because we would get into <laughs> shouting matches, literally, where I was saying things to him. And he was, yeah. and people could hear it because people were afraid because he was in a, it was a position where you really needed him. People needed him to do certain things, basically. Yeah, you know? nothing to lose. Yeah, well. I had like, nothing, and, exactly. Yeah. Like, they didn't have a voice to... Exactly. Field so master. it's nice it's when you have master. that. So it's a nice way to go out. And uh, then I'm going out to do my gigs. And I just said to myself, and I was scared, I mean, I was a little scared, but I just realized, I, you know, at that point... 
I didn't have a lot to lose. I'm like, I'm single. You know, I'd broken up with a girlfriend already. My rent is affordable, and, mm-hmm. and I'll give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, I was like, I'll just go back to a job. I've always had a job. Mm-hmm. I'll just go back and get some job. But I never looked back. I, I quit the job, and uh, I, I just started playing the gigs more and more full time. And I started really playing everywhere and anywhere. You know, yeah. the, the subway, uh, and parks, as well as gigs that I had, you know, uh, you know, you know, club gigs, night, you know, city gigs, whatever. Mm. Okay. That kind of thing. So, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. That was good. So what, you were just, you started strong immediately as soon as you got? Pretty much because they, they were, a lot of things were already in place. Gotcha. So yeah. I was able to just do it. And then the more you're doing it, you know, you're, next thing you know, you're playing here and somebody hears you. And right. it was, it was actually, it was, it was a really, I'm so glad looking back that I did that. My mom was not very happy at all, mm. not at all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Um, there was even an incident where I was playing in the subway. She probably won't be happy with this, but it's this is what happened. Uh, where she she knew that I was playing, and uh, she walked right by me, got on the train. She just because she didn't even want to. She just didn't want to. Like she just could not. <laughs> We've since she since has made up, and and now she's totally a supporter. She really is. That's hilarious. It was a bit crushing too. I was like, wow, oh, wow that's, that's harsh. Hilarious. Yeah. No, I know. What's when wrong, Gladys? Is he at, gay? <laughs> no. No, he plays in the is subway. He, yeah. <laughs> Oh You're my dead God. to me. Yeah. I yeah. saw you on the A train. Uh, exactly. George, I have uh, friends. Yeah. So I, you, what do you know? You're killing your mother, George. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Mom. I, just spoke I love you, her. though. <laughs> Come on, man. Put it down. Oh, wow. That's, that's funny. That's yeah. hilarious. Okay. So, um,. No regrets? No regrets, none at all. Never, never, you know, never look back. No regrets at all. You know, I'm so, I'm really, I'm so happy that I did. I am proud. I mean, you know, like everything, you know, like life is, you know, it, it's a grind at times and it's easy to sometimes forget, but I, I really do try more and more now, especially as I'm getting older to sort of, you know, stop, especially when I feel it sometimes. Uh, and I, I think I've gotten a lot better about it, but just really appreciating taking in like, I'm making a living playing music, you know what I mean? I'm doing this thing that, and and I pretty much created it, you know, I gave it to myself. It's not like this existed somewhere, like, you know, that there was a place where you can go, like an agency and say, hey, yeah, mm-hmm. here's, here's a bunch of gigs for you, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of did it on my own, you oh, know, right. little gotcha, by little, gotcha. yeah. but I'm very proud of that, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, I'm, I've been able to, to make a living doing that and support myself and, uh, and you know, and now I, I have a family. I'm married and, uh, you know, I mean, I was supporting myself before I met her, so I'm proud mm-hmm. of all of that too. Like, I wasn't, you know, I didn't, I, I sort of really did do things on my terms, which is, you know, something to yeah. be proud of no yeah, matter what. For you know? sure. Yeah. That's cool. Well, now that you've avoided all the corporate hassles when you went into playing music for yourself, uh, any particular, I... I am unashamed to say I think most, most musicians are fucking assholes. So I'm just curious <laughs> uh, if you have any uh, any job any problems at the office with the new job being a full time musician. Um, well, you know, yeah, I mean, of course, and there always are. There's, uh, there's, I mean, there's all different aspects of it, right? Like from playing places that are, are horrible, where everyone's miserable and unhappy, mm. and that is usually always comes from the top, and it's reflected all the way down. Damn, and I have definitely turned gigs away where I, where I've been like I don't like the vibe here it just doesn't feel good for me and I can't I'm not going to perform at my best if I don't feel good in a place you know and fortunately I've been I've been able to do that obviously sometimes you need the money and you Mm. you take gigs and you do them Um, over time um, and I've done a lot I also do a lot of private things and that has built up over time I'm very fortunate with that too I've gotten like you know you play at a party you get the cards and the people repeatedly like oh I heard you here would you you know so there's been all of that. But yeah, there've been other uh there's definitely been that. Um I've seen other musicians like you say, you know, I've I've played in places where uh the guys before me or after me or you know, I could see like like you said that they're they're not happy what they're doing, you know. Um and that's kind of a drag to be around it sometimes to see that, you know. Or it kills the vibe for that's in the room for the yeah. people that and then you got to come up next, you know. Yeah. Or they're clean oh, yeah. they're clearing the house out, you know, all of yeah. there's those things too. Um have you experienced like any like super shade like almost like sabotage like crap from any other musicians before or like is that uh, something that like goes on i mean if i mean for sure <laughs> I mean, yeah I, like, I mean I'm, yeah i'm sure it, it definitely does go yeah. on uh, i nothing comes to my mind off you know right off the bat as far as that goes but you know I, the other thing well for me and i think this is also a key i mean i'm i I'm very, very lucky because I'm self-contained. It's just me. You know what mm. I mean? I don't have to depend on any other musicians. I mean, and that, like the incident I spoke about earlier with the band, I mean, that was kind of also part of it. I just decided I'm lucky because I can sing and I can play guitar so I can accompany myself and I can sing and I don't have to, yeah. you know, I don't have yeah. to have somebody else that I need to play with. Because 
and it's great to play with other musicians. I mean, I love that. Mm. I do. I love having a band. But, you know, it becomes complicated, not just not to mention financially, you know, because then it becomes harder to make a living at it right. if you have to split, split the money. Them, but also just in terms of relying on people and dealing with egos and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. that. Uh, I've been pretty fortunate, I would say. I, I, I mean, I may be missing something right now. I'm sure if I think so back. blocked out. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, I, I could tell this story. I definitely, I, this was a band situation I was in <laughs> with a drummer who we used to play with. This guy was super, super, super talented. Great, great drummer. But I, and I've never seen this bef- before or since. <laughs> this guy was the type of guy that would manage to piss people off like within minutes of meeting him. And, uh, and it was terrible, you know, to be in a band with somebody like that. I, I remember. <laughs> like accidentally or like he just. He just accidentally. Kind of, like he couldn't help himself. That's just the yeah. way he was. It was socially uh, awkward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. So much so that I remember years. like yeah. uh, there was a gig we were doing one time. And we, we, we got to the place, we got to the gig, we're not even in there like maybe 10 minutes at the most, you know, to set up. And somebody in charge came up to us, me and uh, the, the other guitar player, and, and said, who is this guy? And he was talking about the drummer, and he had pissed him off. I don't even know what, he was very neurotic, uh, very talented. Mm. I mean, he drove us crazy too, so I know, you know, and, he, and anyway, and I think yeah. we ended up having to leave. We didn't even get to play the gig really? because he pissed them off so much. Yeah, it was like did he say something? I don't know. Yeah, just... I don't even remember it now, but I know that it was. I, and I also remember when we got to the gig, I had a headache <laughs> when yeah. we got there because of him because he was he was very very neurotic and uh, he was talking about something and it was just really getting it would just get really out of control. And then I would be like the counselor in the band too because you know the bass player would call me and say. Oh, you know, to, to talk about him, yeah. uh, and the guitarist would be doing it too. So I'd be the guy. So hearing all of that after mm-hmm. a while too, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's too much. You know. Yeah, I used to like when I was younger and like read up. You know, your favorite band like breaks up. You're like, why? Like, oh, why would you do that? Yeah, and then like, well, fucking take the money, man. Who gives a fuck? Every job sucks. Mm-hmm. And then when you're trapped in a van with someone you can't yep. stand and you're yep. nowhere near home, you're like, this will never fucking happen to me again. It's a really good point, <laughs> and I gotta say, it's funny. It's something that I've really come to now more and more. It's exactly what you're saying. I've thought about this too. I totally get it now. Cause you, yeah, I just feel the same way. I'm like, what do you mean these guys hate each other? What are you talking? Like, what are they, what's the hate? What do you mean they hate? But when you're in a band, you totally get it after a while. You do. You do. Because there's all these little things. There's all that stuff. You know, there's egos, too. You know, there's insecurities. There's just so much. Because it, it's a very intimate thing. Yeah, it's a cliche to say. But it, right, it's it is. It's a marriage. It is. But it's, it's a marriage you did not choose. You're That's like, right. fuck, I'm stuck with this person. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's true. And, and you really are at the mercy, especially if the music is good. If you're creating something. <sighs> when the sex is good. That's the same thing. <laughs> same thing. Everyone loves this. It's such a high. Yeah, you don't want to lose <laughs> that. You don't want to lose it. You're like, God damn it. You know, but you pay a price. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Um, what is some, any notable places you played around that, that uh, the gigs were interesting? Uh, Yeah, well, I'll tell you. (laughs) Actually, this is, this is kind of, I played the Apollo, right? But this was, um. I did this with a couple of musician friends of mine. Um, hmm. This is back, right? I hadn't actually quit the day job yet. I was just about to. And uh, we, there was, it was Amateur Night at the Apollo. Ooh. And uh, it was my friend's idea. He was a singer-songwriter too, a great guy. And uh, we would do a lot of gigs around the city. And we play in the village, in the parks. We even used to play on, I don't know if you remember WBAI radio. It's still yeah, around, I, I think. Yeah. We used to do a show on there, you know, on like late. It was like, I don't know, two in the morning, three in the morning. Was brutal. Yeah, yeah, but it was kind of cool because we're like we're on New York radio and we would sit up there with our guitars and play. Anyway, he he wanted to audition for the Apollo, so I was like, all right, why not? You know, I, I just went along with it. And, and another friend of mine, uh, and uh, the three of us, we passed the audition. And I remember at the time, kind of surprised because it went quickly. You know, they just heard us quickly and they said, "Yeah, you're on. You're in." I was like, "Oh, we're in. All right." I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I started realizing more and more. Like, mm, I don't know, man. Feed him to the. The animal. day of the show comes and we get in there and you know you're down in the green room you know, with all the acts are and you, and there's a TV and you can see them up on the stage and you can also hear, <laughs> and 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 I mean we were, you know. Three white guys. Yeah, they were uh, like, get in. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the, two, two acoustic guitars and a saxophone player. Um, the acts that were on stage at the time, there was like a, like a dance group. There was like a hip-hop act. Those guys are getting booed. Oh, and they're shit. good. And, I'm the, and I knew. I was like, and I'm seeing that. And, and I already had this feeling about Ready it. For blood. I, didn't invite any, I didn't invite anybody to the show. <laughs> but my friend, his mom had flown in. He's from England. And uh, mom came in. 
Um, my friend, uh, my other friend too, I think he had a couple of people there. I didn't tell anybody. I just had this feeling in my gut about it. And uh, sure enough, um, you know, they tell, and they tell you before you go on, rub the, the little, there's a the log or whatever. Yeah, something up yeah, there stump. for good luck. And they also say, you know, even if they start booing you right away, they, they tell you, hang in there for a little bit because sometimes you can win them over. Sometimes, you know, so don't just give up. Mm. But I'm telling you, <laughs> we hadn't even played a note. You know, they, they introduce us, and we're walking up to the microphones. We haven't even played a note. And, they, and I know, so they're just seeing us. And <laughs> they started booing already. <laughs> booing. <laughs> and we didn't play a note. And I, I could see there was a girl got up, and she's waving her finger, going, oh, no. It sort of all <laughs> happened in slow motion, too. But I always remember it. And, um, yeah, and it, was, and it was just, you know, the Sandman came out, and uh, we, got, we got booed. We didn't even really get to play. I think we, we got a few seconds in. Oh, and my really? friend was taping it on, on a cassette tape. Uh, and when it was done, um, I remember <laughs> he was so devastated and it really kind of broke my heart in a way. I felt bad because he was really, really devastated. Mm. Um, and I even said to him, I was like, you know, like this doesn't, you know, we, we played these songs. I mean, first of all, yeah. like you know what that was about. Right? They barely even heard us. Yeah. So it wasn't Personal. judged on yeah. us yeah. Yeah, at yeah, all. And these, you know, we played these same songs in the village. I said, this was not our thing. Yeah. This was just a thing. But he was like, take this cassette. I never want to hear it. <laughs> Uh, Again. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway that was my uh, the Apollo but I also was very proud of it, and, I, and I always remember that before the performance I remember trying to take it and thinking we're, no matter what we're going to be able to say we played the Apollo yeah. and we yeah. were on this stage yeah. where all these great acts have been you know and when you're there earlier in the day when we were there I remember looking at the wall and seeing all the pictures of everybody that's been there mm. So like I'm kind of pr- I'm proud of that yeah no I mean <laughs> you know? it also like I mean I don't know what it was like then but now it's just like you know, to say you got booed at the Apollo, nobody, that doesn't mean anything. You know yeah, what I, mean? I know. Just that's like, yeah, true. It was going to be this, you know, uh, either or. You know right, I mean? yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's Imagine interesting. Built yeah. up like some of that callousness of like stage presence where you just. That too. I mean, all of it. And going back to with me playing music for a living, you know, that's the other thing that was really good. You know, I, I played a lot in the subways and uh, it was good. It was good for my chops. It was good for my, you know, like you said, grit because, you know, people can. They, they, I, they're uh, growing. They, they don't care. They, they just got to get there. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and it was good. I had a lot of also really beautiful experiences. People, I was so surprised how people would often take the time to even write notes and say, thank you for this. Mm. I saved a lot of that and I put it in a sort of a photograph book just to save it because I was like, I, and I got a lot of that from people that were saying, thank you for that song. Uh, I had a hard day just hearing that meant a lot to me or whatever. Or reminded me of my father this and that all a lot of, I was just surprised at how much especially in New York you know everyone like you said everyone's rushing to get somewhere but people uh, lots of times took time to write a little something mm-hmm. so it was nice to sort of have that exchange oh well, I mean you start as I was gonna say can you talk about like that as far as the philosophy because I've always wondered it's I'm, you know, I'm completely cynical about the whole thing because I'm just like, yeah, after a hard day at work, you know what I want to fucking hear, asshole? Your campfire version of sexual healing because I haven't heard enough, you know what I mean? Right. So uh, I'm just, uh, and then some people that go out there, they, they don't, they're not good. Oh, well, yeah. So it's yeah, not like, I, I know. Oh, I'm just going to give it's, you the art. You know, right. it's like, no, you're, yeah. I think, well, I think it's like anything. I think, you know, people know, and that's the other thing, right? That Well, first of all, they're going to be brutally honest because there's got no, why wouldn't they? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you're not there. They, they, they're either not going to comment at all, or they might comment, and it might not be nice, or, or it will be really nice, you know what I mean? Um, I, I just think if you're, you know, if you, if you're, you do it, uh, people can tell, you know, always can tell. If you're singing from your heart, obviously if there's talent there and you sound good, hopefully, you know. Um, but I mean, more than that, and it goes back to what I was saying about even when you were in clubs, I've been in places where you, you could tell, you could see the guy up there is, looks miserable. That vibe is coming across to the audience. Mm. They can feel it, you know what I mean? So whatever you're feeling, that always, you know, that comes yeah. across lots of times. And, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm, I know it's hard sometimes. I've had to play sometimes where I've have had a shitty day and I'm like, I don't really feel good. I don't feel like doing this, but it is my job and I got to do it. And I just, you, you kind of do the best you can. And, and you know, you're, we're all a little crazy. I mean, I sit there sometimes and I'm the worst critic of all. I'll be sitting there berating myself <laughs> saying, this yeah. sucks. I suck <laughs> tonight. And that's when somebody comes up and says, man, you sound great. Your voice sounds great. great. And I'm thinking to myself, holy. But it's good in a way because it takes you out of yourself and you realize, wow, I'm really doing a number here tonight on myself, you know. <laughs> what, what do you like? Do you build a set that you just keep repeating because you know the changeover of the audience, or you just go straight through? Or I this is another thing that I developed, and I and actually I get a lot of um, I've gotten a lot of compliments on this. It's it's something that I've 
I read the room a lot, and I play like you know I, I play bars and I play restaurants, and I try to really read the room. So like if there's an older crowd, or like in the restaurant, for instance, where it's more family and kids. You know, depending on who's out there, I'll play older things that I think they're going to like. That goes back to what I was saying earlier about just, for me, I love so much, you know, all that stuff on the 70s. I'm playing everything from Elton John. I like it. I like a lot of that stuff. Uh, I know guys who can't stand playing, you know, American Pie because, you know, it's so long and whatever. To me, I never get tired of playing it, quite honestly. I, mm. I love the song. It's, it's a great song. And, um, you know, but I, so for me, it's, I tend to just, I try to read the crowd. And so, and then if it's a younger crowd, I'm going to try and play things that they, I think they're going to like. Right. I happen to like it though too. So it's not just like, thank God, you know, it's not right. just me like playing things. That I'm like, oh, I can't stand this. Because otherwise, yeah. yeah. Like I said, and that's going to come across. Yeah, yeah, of and, You know what I mean? And then maybe you really shouldn't be doing it, you know, if you don't. Is, is there any like subway culture, like you being there all day? Is there anything going on that you see or know about that maybe commuters that are in and out of there don't? see um there may be it's been so long now for me too since then i did it i mean this was back in the late 90s when i started playing um and i and i only did it for a few years um so not so much that i recall you don't get to Um, know the people who sit on the bench all day oh well well you know what was was funny speaking of that this is kind of sad though but uh i used to play by the world trade center and just before you know 9 11 um, it was the rec- uh, I forget the stop now. It was on the N and R train. It was my favorite spot to play because you have the tunnels, the Jersey tunnels. There's a lot of um, mm. you know everybody coming in from there from all over. Like a hub. Yeah, yeah. hub exactly. And some of the most beautiful people. And I would see a lot of regulars and people that would see me. And they would, they, I made great money there. But smiles too. It was a lot of that. There were certain spots there, and I I just always had a fondness for that particular spot. It just always was good. Yeah. And uh, and after 9/11, I had stopped shortly just before 9/11. Um, I remember thinking back because that subway just got destroyed and I, I have often thought and wondered wow I wonder if anybody of those people that I knew those faces of any of them were oh, there at that time or any of that yeah. stuff you know yeah. but um, but yeah there was a lot of that in certain spots you know because right because it's commute you know it's people going to work back and forth so you would see yeah. some, some regulars yeah that's funny because I always see those videos where people are like oh this world renowned violinist played in the subway and no one paid attention oh yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. they got fucking things to do exactly yeah I know, I know it's so true exactly right right yeah it's so true and you can't take that personal and it's funny because that's my, my well you said I asked about philosophy my philosophy has been always that too I've seen guys for me I always felt it's a bit much when you're actually on the subway and you're playing I've always felt like you're getting a little... Oh, when they get uh, in, in on the train. Yeah, they're like, hey, everybody. I always everybody. feel like oh, it's a little fuck. too much and you're right Showtime, in everyone, face. showtime. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, God bless them. You know, I don't want to take... I mean, I understand it's hard. You got to try to get people to pay attention. But I never did that. I always was on the platform and always try to remember, you know, they don't have to do anything. I'm, I'm coming here and people don't have to tip me. You yeah. know, they don't mm-hmm. have to even anything yeah. so just to sort of you know be grateful about I get annoyed that. like with when like with the pole dancers when they're when at the end of their spiel they're just like no one uh, like no one got kicked in the face so yeah. how about show me some, some love in this place yeah. it's like, yeah. hey, thanks. like well so, thank you like, give you a dollar because <laughs> right, you right, right. not right. fucking off my yeah, yeah. Like, I know or the radio that's like the speaker's so fucking blown out that it's just like, right yeah. in your ear you're like come on asshole yeah I mean those guys are super talented they're, they're amazing sure. I'm impressed yeah. by what they're doing completely and I and I you know I don't even know what, where do you. What I mean, you, there's like I've seen some like some bullshit stuff. I don't remember there was like this little trend with like kind of like voguing with your fingers and that they would do like and it just be like in the subway. Yeah, where they would like like stop they just do this little like voguing move on their fingers. Oh just really? Stupid <laughs> man. Like get like go back in the like do flips please. Yeah 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 yeah. Go on, kick me in the face please. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Anything but this. Right. So. uh... So how did you become a folk singer? Well, I, I'm just—I guess I'm mm. in my head. I'm thinking of like. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's that's about. Oh yeah, I think it's time for a commercial. Oh, okay. oh, oh, man. Studios. Hey, we lost, we lost the hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we're back and we're taking calls for Ask a Sound Man. You ready for some calls, Sound Man? Yeah, sure. Well, all right, we got Josh on the line. Josh, what's your question for the Sound Man? Yeah, my band had a gig about a week ago, and uh, we lost a few of our adapters. Like, the sound band, he didn't even help us out. Like, it was my impression that you guys said you had the equipment at the club. You guys are supposed to be professionals. Listen, you know, I... 
Listen, you're playing your gig at a music venue, not a music store, all right? It's up to you to have all the things that you need for your performance. Don't rely on our inventory. <laughs> yeah, okay. Last question. Why are Saba always so miserable, huh? Is it because they're failed musicians? I get a paycheck. You get drink tickets. Who's the failure, you talentless <laughs> piece of shit? You know, if you don't like your job, why don't you just quit? You know what? I love my job. I just hate the narcissist pieces of shit clientele. That's oh, why. Oh, yeah, right. Why don't you go you know, fucking you get on to you, you piece of shit. Just jealous. 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 Just Hey, are you facing indictment from the IRS? Is bankruptcy knocking at your doorstep? Has the wealth value of your wedding ring not sustained your marriage? Do you want to make the divorce appear to be the child's fault? Are you undergoing deportation in the fear of immigration? Does transmission fluid need to be checked? Atrocity exhibition need to ban? Isolation license need to be renewed? Auto suggestion overstepping the bounds? Incubation shed not producing enough Kevlar zinc spices? I'm just found I got a bunch of Joy Division song titles at this point. I'm Jerome H. Diamond, attorney at law and shit alkaline, and I can get you out of almost any jam. But don't take my word for it, just listen to a testimonial from one of my clients. Take it away, Miss HRQ. <laughs> you heard it right, folks. I got him a brand new Cadillac. <laughs> you ought to know by now, I get results. No haggle, no hassle, no bullshit. You got bad credit, you got no credit, then do bad asshole, that's not my problem. So come down to my office, it's completely located next to the Mercedes Benz of the big car lot next to the freshly painted Caraca barrel. Don't make me sue your ass. We are the universe. You and I and my friend. We are the universe. And we have always All that is has been created in the construct of a dream. From the flow of consciousness manifested in the stream. Well, that's what we can segue into the projects, growing up in the projects. <laughs> so, what's it like growing up in the projects? Uh... Um, and that in well, seventies, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, my memories of it, um, you know, and I'm sure this is also because of time. You know, with time, you look back at things with more fondness. <laughs> um, hopefully, maybe. Uh, well, it, it was it was nice. I mean, honestly, the I I think the projects I grew up in were probably one of the nicest projects around. <laughs> because I always I always I, there were flowers and trees and gardens and butterflies. Like I have these memories of going out the back of my building and. Uh, there was a guy upstairs, an old German guy. In Queens. <laughs> in, in Queens, mm -hmm. yeah, in, in Ravenswood Projects. His name was John, and he used to yell at all his kids to get off the grass. Well, he used to, and there was this big, like, patch of grass right behind the building, and we would play in that grass, walk in that grass. And uh, he eventually put a garden in there and was growing vegetables and things like that, and he used to yell at us to, to get out of there. Um, but, uh, you know, I also remember the maintenance, the, you know, the housing. They would go around there cutting the grass and that smell of the grass. I remember these things, and they were, like, and, you know, it was beautiful <laughs> in some ways. Uh, on the other hand, it was the projects, and, uh, <laughs> you know, there was definitely, um, you know, because I always want to be careful. I don't want to make it sound like, I mean, yeah, it was the projects for sure. And we, my pro the projects I grew up in were between two other projects, one being Queensbridge, which is right here, and then Astoria projects. And those were rougher projects. And the kids from those projects used to come into my project, you know, our projects there and steal our bikes and things like that. So it was kind of like, oh, they're coming, you know, it was that kind of stuff. Um, but for me personally, in my own experience growing up, and the other thing that was nice about where I grew up at the time in the 70s, it was a mixed neighborhood. So you had everybody living there, Polish, Italian, black, you know, everybody, Spanish. Um, and I'm glad that I grew up in that environment too, you know. And then I had my little gang of, you know, friends really. Uh, it was mainly my brother and my cousins. And, and then we had our little friends from school. My, I went to a Catholic school, which was literally two straight blocks down from the building I was living in. So there was the Catholic school and the church. And, you know, and my at that time, a lot of my father's family all lived. We all lived within, you know, blocks of each other, like literally a block over. So nice. my family was there, you know. Um, I had my friends there. And for me, you know, it was actually, it was, it was all right. It was pretty good. I mean, there was, of course, a lot of my parents, uh, you know, g divorced. And there was a lot of turmoil in, in the home. But... Um, so it was a mixture of things, you know, um, and I was also always a creative kid. So I always think I had, I think I survived too, because I had my, 
my toys and I had my uh, my art. I used to draw and, I, and actually that was my first love before the music. I used to, you know, be an illustrator and I loved the comic books and really that's what I wanted. Well, I either wanted to be Spider-Man and if I couldn't be Spider-Man then I wanted to, you know, draw Spider-Man or some, create a comic book character. Have you character. really given it up though? Not completely. Yeah, so <laughs> I haven't given up on that You're yet. Still I may. The city. There is. Yeah, you, you should... never know. <laughs> um, so yeah. So it was a mix, a mixture of uh, things. But I would say overall, it was looking back, and I was pretty lucky. It was pretty good. You know? So you didn't like sell crack in the staircase no, or lose no. your virginity <laughs> to the next door neighbor or nothing like I that. I did not. Oh, I really on, did man. not. I know. I'm sorry. This. I know. <laughs> for the room. All right, let's do this again. I'll juice it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so funny. So I recently, uh, my so I was saying my my father's family all kind of grew up was nearby, you know. But one by one, they started to move away, moved to, to like, Maine. For some reason, everybody went to Maine. Um, and I have an aunt who lives there still. And, uh, like I said, I used to draw. So, apparently, you know, when you were a kid, uh, you'd make these drawings. And my father, I guess, was very proud of my drawings. And he would save them, and he sent them to my aunt. And then I recently, about two years ago, my aunt said, oh, you know, I was going through stuff, and I found these drawings that you did. Uh, and I, would you like to have them? I'm going to send them to you if you want them. So she did. It was so cool to see these drawings that I did that I had no memory of doing, but I was like seven years old. But uh, the, <laughs> one of the pictures in particular was very telling. I did this 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 illustration, uh, and it's of all these people in the in the uh, in the picture. They all have smiles on their faces, but they all have guns in their hands. They're all guns in their hands, and I think there's even some people in the background that are dead that are being carried away like in an ambulance. And it's all smiles, and there's the sun, and all this. I mean, this is right out of, like, you know, this would be like a psychiatrist. Uh, I was going to say, are you okay now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so interesting to see that because, I mean, I cracked up when I saw it because I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I don't, I don't remember doing it, but everybody looks really happy. <laughs> there's one with, like, the guy's smiling, and he's got the gun next to the girl, like, you know, the head, and he's smiling. So there's a lot of there was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff going on at home, uh, and I'm sure that I, I must have somehow <laughs> put all of that out uh, on on there. So yeah, there's a gap. Something <laughs> something. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was a nice environment outside. I guess inside. Well, see, all my turmoil was inside. It was all gotcha. Yeah, okay. It was all internal. <laughs> Interesting. Do you, do you remember like seeing any violence like that? Or? Um, well, I mean, you know, there was violence in my home. Mm-hmm. Even uh, my mother, my father, my father. There were things that went on there that were not good. <laughs> mm-hmm. That you don't really want to see your dad doing you know definitely with my mom there was definitely that uh for sure um and uh, and then it was just a lot of yelling which you know to a kid i mean that's the other thing uh it's so funny when i look back at it like there was everybody yelled in, in the cell like literally my, my, my father was definitely a yeller uh so he's yelling at home um my grandparents were much involved my grandfather's a big screamer but and my aunt was a yeller uh but also like you know, I, I said I went to a Catholic school. They all yelled there, too. You go to, I mean, I literally went to school with Nazi. I, I often think, I'm surprised I didn't, like, develop ulcers. Because everywhere I went, people were screaming. And I was always like, oh, shit. Very I just got to keep my head down and try to be a good yeah. boy and, like, not let them, you know, if I just do the right thing, stay out of, you know, under the radar. Maybe they won't yell at me. But mm-hmm. everyone's yelling. You know, everyone's screaming. And then it's also, they got, I remember even the nuns were yellers, you know. If they weren't beating on you or whatever, they were screaming at you. Mm. And even some of the teachers, there was always a lot of that. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not the thing, too. Like, everybody's just like, uh, the, the people that cry all this uh, offenses, it's like, you don't fucking have a gauge of how bad it was. It's like, you're bitching about the good, sunshiny side of things. Right. Before anyone felt there was any reform, everyone endured the problem, you right, know. It's right. like, fuck, yeah, I remember thinking when I was a little kid that everyone was just an asshole. Yeah, like, I mean, they kind of were. It's like this whole pediatric saw, uh, be good to kids, understand where they're coming from. I was on my way out of school when that shit started coming in. Everyone was a fucking dick. It's true. It's you really know? true. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it's so true. Yeah. I, I used to, so like I said, my parents divorced and um, when I was 10. So, um, but my father moved down the block. He hooked up with some lady and, and she's literally down the block. So my mom sends me, I got to go get the, the alimony money. You know, <sighs> so I got to go knock on the... They sent rap, you? Uh, yeah, they sent me. What the fuck? First of all, like what the hell? I'm like 10, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm Tell your get father this money. to pass the potatoes. <laughs> yeah, this woman who's like death. I mean, I was scared to knock on her window uh, and she had these kids who were like from hell. Uh, but uh, so that was awful. But it got even worse because my father would come to the window and it's always dark in there. I'm like, I don't even know. What are you guys, vampires? Like, what's going on in here? But it's just horrible to begin with because I got, I'm in this position where I got to ask for the money. I got to encounter this woman who does not have a smile on her face, like a big scowl. You know, just, you know, I'm sorry. I'm his, 
on. Yeah. <laughs> They've sent me. <laughs> I've been sent. I mean, literally, it's like standing the lamp for the slaughter. I would go there. Or, and my, the great thing would be that it doesn't end there. My father's like, I don't have it, but go to your grandfather. And he lives up the block, on the same block, but in the... Now, I know when I get there, my grandfather is going to be cursing out my father but he's going to be cursing at my grandma because my grandma's going to give me the money for uh. my father. And he's like, what the hell? Why are you giving that son of a bitch? Meanwhile, I'm standing there and he's talking about my father yeah. and he's screaming at her. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, they sent me. Look what I've caused. Uh. Jesus, I'll just take the money. Thanks. I really am a piece of shit. I should uh. just call up because this money is for us uh. you know, to survive. So what a horrible, horrible yeah, feeling. Yeah. However, the good side of that was it motivated me to be like, I ain't doing this shit no more. Why don't we have our own money? I know what, I, hey, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a job. You know, which is ironically also is my grandfather, because my grandfather was the Greek, hard Greek guy that he mm. always was asking, you, are you working? He had his chair, like Archie Bunker, that was his yeah, chair. Yeah. And whenever you saw him, it was like, eat all your food. Mm. And, uh, and I remember as I got older, I mean, it's funny, as I think about it, I'm thinking I was 12 or 14, like, why do you ask me if I'm working? But, <laughs> <laughs> but he grew up from a time that was really, really No hard. unions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he was working. Kinda. So yeah. I know he was a hard man. But anyway, yeah, so there was all that yelling you know, and no considerations at all for your feelings. This kid is there. I'm like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be bad mouthing so and so in front. Of That's his father you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and you're cursing out his grandmother. Yeah. And I mean, it was it's so much. Doctor Spock. Anyway. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. There was so much of that. Yeah. And then I would go, or I go to my aunt, and I'm hearing my aunt. You know, this is how it was. The adults would talk like as if the kids don't have ears and get no brains in their heads, and we can't put it together. Like, uh, yeah. you're talking about my mother, and yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, she's so like right next to you. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. It's really bothering. It's really bothering her. Yeah, yeah. and it's, I don't feel too hot about it. No, she doesn't either. But she's visibly distraught. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of yelling and a lot of. Uh, yeah. So that's enough. So you don't really need the, the you know project stuff to be <laughs> to be a wreck to come out of it and be like, eh, you know. Now, for, for, now we use the word projects all the time, but yeah. like back then though, w was it indicative of a sort of economic class or was it just because because the word project is because they were these new developments yes yeah. and it literally was like a project yeah. like, let's put these people here and yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens yeah, yeah totally well my understanding at least in from what i understand about ravenswood projects is that it actually was for what the uh, middle income actually it started out there it wasn't like um and i think at some point they lowered it so that it could be more affordable for everybody right and perhaps that's why it was more that's mixed when i was growing up gotcha, you know what gotcha, i mean gotcha. yeah that's what i heard about at least with Ravenswood, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I mean, I guess I'm glad in a way that at least I grew up, you know, around a mixture of people, you right. know? I think that's a, was a great thing. Wow, know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny coming to New York City. Right. I, I came in 1994 and still met people in Brooklyn that were like racist oh, and weird and like well, how? Absolutely. How? absolutely. You know, right? I know. <laughs> well you learned that it's so true because yeah. I would go out there's these pockets of like and, and later on when I moved and I lived like if I lived in Bensonhurst for a little bit or other, I was like shit I'm scared of these people yeah. Yeah, I'm white yeah. <laughs> but I can tell there's a certain mentality there and there's there's a certain way and uh, and, uh, and they're very isolated yeah they like oh the, that's, they that's love exactly what it is yeah. that's exactly what it is it's the isolation and you ha you don't have to go very far you know we think about the south we think about no it's here in New York City too in these yeah. neighborhoods like that and I've seen it whether it's Staten Island I've, I, I, I'm i mixed you know like I said you look at me my skin is white but I'm half Puerto Rican um, I've never really felt like I fit in in any particular group and you know that's how I've always felt because right. I never felt I wasn't right my mom speaks Spanish but we didn't speak it in the house so I didn't really feel like I fit in when I go in with the Puerto, my family mm. and see them they can speak Spanish I can't speak it um, and then on my other father's side it's Greek and German and uh, and so there too, I, we were a little bit shunned a little bit. It felt like growing up on my father. I had to do because of my father. I felt like from his family because my father didn't go to college or anything like that, but his sisters did. And and you know, I mean, they did good. They did good for themselves. But we weren't really because of my father and a lot of it because we were always he was always in a position of not having money and asking people for money, so that didn't sit too well with them. So naturally, they would want to kind of avoid. And mm -hmm. as a result we were lumped in with that so that's also a stigma that you carry a little bit like yeah mm, we're these we're these um you know <laughs> that's uh that's where i am i'm half mexican and uh, the same thing when when i was born like and i was in the nursery my mom would start to speak spanish to me and they were like at the time it was 99 too and they're like don't don't do that like it's like and so she just didn't do that 
Right. I didn't grow up. My sister like grew up learning Spanish. Uh-huh. I didn't. And when I see my grandparents on my mom's yeah. side, it's like I don't. It's like I could tell there's something very loving coming out of your mouth. Yes. I don't know exactly what you're saying. It was but exactly like, like that with my grandmother my, yeah. on my mother's side. Never, and she never. Uh, even to the day she died, she never learned a word of English. Didn't mm-hmm. speak at all. And same thing. She'd come over. My only. She'd bring a little packet of fig newtons. These cookies. That's what I remember. <laughs> that was the thing. But it's the same thing you said. I could tell it's very loving. What's coming yeah. out? You could feel that. Yeah. And they smell. They often smell nice. You know. These grandparents. <laughs> But, and then, but those are my memories, and those yeah. are what—that's what you hold on to, sort of. Like, oh, and then, like, the, my grandparents on the other side are always just expressing disappointment. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Well, that's and my. Like, and I understand that. My, yeah, that, that you get very vocal, very right. Exactly. I got it. Thank, yeah. yeah, I'll try yeah. better. Right. It's like, yeah, you're right. He is a piece of shit. I'm sorry. I'm the son. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this money. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've paid the price <laughs> more than paid. <laughs> I'm going to need this for therapy later. <laughs> Thanks. I'm ashamed, but I won't go hungry tonight. Right. right exactly. You know? You're right. right. <laughs> So for growing up in the projects and making the conscious decision to leave your job, um, like there's these cliches which have a root in something, you know, in, in people giving you advice not to become a working musician. And it's nine times out of ten it has everything to do with finances. People say it's just not a good mm. way to, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Um, and you said you grew up with your dad not having a lot of money, that he was an artist. Yes. What a... Uh, what sort of philosophy or perspective have you developed for yourself or been forced to, mm-hmm. to view as far as that aspect of being an artist for a living? Um, and, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean and not just what you do day to day, but I mean the way, you know, like you said, you have a family now. Yeah. And, yep. and just, just on that level of like how, how would you go about, what would you recommend or tell somebody when it comes to approaching that aspect of it, you know, where your head is at and, you know, Everyone, of course, the answer for everyone is, oh, make it, but you can, you're not in control of that. Exactly. You know? That Well, you know, that's, yeah. That's, and that hangs up some people with their idea of success. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's a really good point, actually. It's a great question. Um, I, I, um, so for me, like, you know, my journey in all of this, like I said, I had a lot already that was sort of um, because of my father, you know, and his experience. So I watched my dad. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, he worked. He always, he, uh, to a point, he worked. He drove a cab. And, uh, you know, I was little, and so I only slowly began to understand as I got older, and then especially as I got into music myself. But what he was doing was he was working, um, and then he was going, I guess, to open mics. My, my father didn't play an instrument, so he was a singer, so he would go to these places, and he would sing. And I, and I, I understand now, according you know, to the story, he did very well. He had a beautiful voice. So I grew up always hearing him sing. I also heard him ranting on the phone, yelling at somebody, this person, you know, Koenig, these names I would hear, Kathy Lynn is supposed to do this for me, he didn't do it. Uh, and I, and or, hey dad, can we go to the movies? And then he, I, when I get my record, I don't have the money, but when I get my record, so that definitely impacted me, uh, and, and I grew up with that. And of course, you know, you can imagine some resentment and associating with music and, and that kind of thing. Like, oh, that well, that kind of sucks. Putting together, like, well, you have a family, and we're here now. We're your kids. Like, I'm, you know, I'm never going to be this age. I mean, you know, this is later on. Obviously, I'm not, but processing it and realizing, like, oh, so we're going without. So you can do this thing. And then little by little you start thinking, well, why don't you have the money? Why don't you just, hey, Dad, well, look, I'll never forget. There was a time uh, when I was, I was older and I said to him, why don't you just get your own money? You know, like, why are you always in a position where you're asking people for the money? Like, if money's what you need to do this. And he was like, and he yelled, you know, he was, because uh, he was like, you don't understand. What do you know? You don't know. You know, I, I paid my dues. And anyway, so there was always that association with it. And um, while, you know, I was falling in love with music, you know, for myself, and, and I guess thinking, dreaming like you do, like, oh, I'd love to be a rock star, the Beatles, you know, whatever, uh, something to that. But but so with the, um, I would say for me, you know, I was playing, like I said, since 13, 14, so by the time I finished high school, and I just managed to finish high school, I just barely graduated, um, I certainly wasn't going to college. I was, it was going to be, uh, money was an issue, so I was always like, I got to work. And in my head, I was thinking, this is just my, at the time, all right, I'm going to work a job, uh, I'm going to help my family, and I play my music at night and on the weekends, you know, and I'm, and I'm going to have that hit record or whatever. This is when I'm, you know, 17, 18, 19, you can still be, you know, right. yeah, idealistic and all of that. And, and so th- as that went on and, and moving forward to like where I said, where I then had the girlfriend and then I, you know, I, I got to the point where I'm like, I can't, I don't want to do this anymore. That didn't last long. I realized always music was a part of me and I wanted to make a living doing it. But I always, I think by that point, I always had instilled in me that, okay, but that's fine. But 
you do need to support yourself always. And that has a lot to do with seeing everything I, I was saying earlier about my father and the position we were in. I couldn't bear to be without money. I remember I was uh, like 17 in high school and I was working at a supermarket. And so my studies fell to the side. But I was able to buy my first electric guitar and I was very proud of that. Mm-hmm. And that felt really good. And I was empowering. And that was the thing. That's the word empowering. There wasn't a lot of empowerment in my family. And my father, loving this thing as much as he did, I could also see that he was so disempowered. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no, there was just a lot of sadness and a lot of anger. And, uh, and, I, and I, guess, I guess what I told myself was I'm not going to be that. That's for sure. I, I, you know, I don't know, but that's not good. I don't want that. I, we gotta have the power. I gotta have it in my own hands, especially if I was being used like a ping pong ball. I'll go to this one, go to that one for the money, for the money. Yeah, thinking, Why don't we have the money in our own hands? Yeah. I want the money in my own hands, so no one can ever tell me no. You know? Gotcha. And that's really what was the big motivator for me, and that's why I worked the jobs, and that's why I ended up at a law firm, and almost went that way until I said, "This isn't who I want to be," and I had to really stop myself and say. This isn't, I, I, had, I had, there was, there was, you know, I had a girlfriend who I loved at the time and I could have had, you know, that was that, I guess that was something I always wanted, you know, uh, just cause I'm married now and I did want to have a family. But again, my model for it all wasn't good. I, I remember very early on when I looked at my family and the struggles, I remember thinking, this is fucked up, man. I'm not doing this. This is not how you do it. You don't have three kids and not have any money for them and, and this be a problem. And I remember thinking, I'm not doing this at all. If I do it, it won't be like this. But, you know, that's also you thinking like as if I know that there's no, <laughs> you know, you do it and you figure a lot of things out, too. Yeah. There's no, that's just being young and thinking, you know, there's got to be a better way. But um, well, that's better than walking blind. Into a yeah. Repeated yeah. It was something. Scenario. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, in that way. So my philosophy has just been, yeah, you got to be empowered. You got to be empowered and you do have to be realistic about it. Um, you know, there's no, um, you know, I, I, I. I I'm actually fortunate that I have my father's example. That's the one thing I do say. As, as disappointing as it has been and can be still at times, I'm grateful for his, his example because in a way it, it, it reminds me this is everything you don't want to be. Right. And, it's, and I have a lot of things in my life now that he did, well, he, he had and no longer has. I mean, he, he had, so you can, you can have this dream and be a slave to it and at the end of it have nothing to show for mm. it. Or you can find a way you know, a realistic way to pursue it and still have, and, and not lose sight of what's important. I mean, especially if you're going to have kids. If you're going to have kids, man, you don't, sorry, that dream's got to take a back seat. You yeah. got mm-hmm. to be there for them sure. and provide for them. I'm not saying you have to give up on that, but you're going to have to work a lot harder. Absolutely. And you got to be willing to do it. You know, okay. and that's kind of, that's what it was for me. And that's what's key in me, my making the decision. When I decided to leave the law firm, I remember thinking very clearly, I checked and I said, no kids, no wife, nobody else is going to suffer. I'm not taking anybody else down with me. Nobody else is going to go hungry except me. I'm good. I can do that. I can nice. live with that. Mm. You know, and if I starve, I'll figure it out. I'll get a job. I always have, always will. You know, nice. that's always been my thing, you know, okay. and that's, that's always how I looked at it. And I'm like, I'm just going to do this and now, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, well, to put a book in that moving toward the end here, because you have a gig. I do. <laughs> um, I'm uh, just curious if you just speak on like what uh, could you have a record coming out you're yeah. doing all the things you're supposed to do yep. to be a success <laughs> in the music and yeah. then hey there's no music industry anymore uh, yep, yep so yeah. uh, what are uh, yeah from the state of where things are to where maybe where things could be or where you think they should be mm-hmm. where, where are you going from here forward with your goals and perspectives and expectations as far as music um, that's a great question too. I, I, uh, so this project, deciding to do this project was a big deal for me, um, because I've done, you know, many recordings in the past and, and, um, you know, and again, there's always baggage and things that come with it and things that can shut you down and things that make you feel like I don't want to really do that or, you know, because especially when you're paying for everything on your own, it's finances, but, uh, but more than that, it's all the emotional investment that you put into, you know, into any project mm-hmm. and, and how that's going to turn out and the disappointments. The disappointments are the big thing because they haunt you. They can't haunt you, yeah. you know, and they can stop you in your tracks completely if you You're let just it. like randomly sitting in the bus like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, you know, you're not even aware sometimes that that's what's at play. Uh, but the truth of the matter is I love music. I always have. I always I still get up every day just as just. Just the same as I did when I was 13, 14, I still love to pick up the guitar in the morning and mm. play the guitar. Even if it's just playing Buddy Holly or whatever it is or somebody I love, I still love to do that. Mm. So it starts with that. That's always, I'm always connected to that. And, uh, and so I've been writing all this time. And so I started this project and 
Um, my my uh, my goals, I guess, is just uh, with the understanding, like you just said. I mean, the industry is completely. I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> you know. And, and actually, it's not it's completely a bad thing. What's nice is that we're doing like what we're doing right here. There's a lot of stuff that's in our hands now, which yeah. is actually really good, right? Because in the past, the 70s, whatever it was, you had to be signed to a label, yeah. and you had to. There was no way in. There was no way in. You, you you either were in or you weren't, and then you were at their mercy, right? Because it's like you got to do what they're going to say you got to do, and whatever. So that's kind of nice. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, and and but I've made my peace with it. When I decided right before I decided to do this project that. I, I told myself, and I said this to my wife when I talked to her about it, uh, that I said, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to not attach much to it. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to have fun doing it. And um, I'm not going to make this, I'm not going to make this a defining, this isn't going to define my career. My career is what it's been, and it, it will continue so long as I want it to. It, it is what it is. But this is... Yeah, this is just something I'm going to do that I want to really do, and it's going to be a document at the end. At the, if nothing else happens, if nobody else hears it, it's going to be something that I, I enjoyed the process of doing. I had fun making it, and I will have something that is mine, even if I'm the yeah. only one, like a photo, like an album, that I can look back and say, that's what I did mm -hmm. during this time, and it was time well spent. I'm happy. I'm proud of that. I enjoyed that. Maybe I wish I did that a little different or whatever, but you know that's always <laughs> you know that's right. always the case with anything yeah. you create. But but overall, it was a good experience, and um, so I'm really determined to do that. And yeah, and in the back of my head, if I'm completely honest, of course, there's a part of me that's going. And yeah, maybe something will happen. Maybe maybe I'll get lucky with something. Maybe one song. Maybe I'll sell the song. You know, I mean, I'm very realistic. I'm not out mm -hmm. to be a you know big rock star or anything like that. But you know, who knows? Who knows if I can get a song in a movie? Maybe or yeah, if course. somebody. Famous wants to do one of my songs. Hey, man, that's great. That'd be great. That's not a bad, you know. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, where do the do you have a website? I do. Yeah. Ah. It's it's, it's uh, my website is www.georgestas.com. Okay. And you have a video out now. And I have song, a video. Right? We just did a video for the song is "We Are the Universe," mm -hmm. and uh, the the, uh, the it's on uh, it's, well it's on YouTube on my my channel. You can see. Oh, it's, well, it's "We Are the Universe," George Stas. If people. You know, uh, put that in, they'll find it'll come up. And, um, and when can they listen slash purchase the record? The record is actually available now uh, for purchase. It's on iTunes and Spotify, and uh, it'll probably be on a couple of other things. They, I forget what they, some of them take longer to get onto the other okay. music services, but it is available as of right now. Mm. Uh, it's it's out there. So the video is out there. The song is out there. And your gigs are on your page? My, on my page as well, nice. yeah. They're listed on the, on the website. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thanks Thank for being so here Thank you so much. It was so much fun, fun to do this. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Rock on. So much. Right. I had a blast. Thank All you. All right. Take us out, brah. And this is the Oddcast signing off. All right. <laughs>